Welcome to 3ds Max 2011. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new node-based material editor called Slate. Now when you go to invoke the material editor, you'll notice the material editor button is now a flyout. This indicates that you have two choices to choose from. Of course, you can still call up the old material editor, now called the compact material editor. But more significantly, you have the ability to open up a new material editor called Slate. The Slate material editor is a node-based material editor that allows us to create and organize our materials in a non-linear node-based fashion. So for example, I'll load a material that's a multi-subobject material with 12 submaterials. If we choose this node and zoom in, you can see we see things that look familiar to us. The node itself has maps that are wired into each map slot. If I double click on the map slot, you can see that we get information that is familiar to us from the old material editor, including map channels and amounts and specular information. The Slate Material Editor is a configurable workspace. On the left is the new material map browser. In the middle is our workspace, or what we call the views. On the right is the navigator that allows you to navigate your entire workspace quickly and easily and the Material Parameter window, which is what you're used to seeing with the Compact Material Editor. Creating and working with materials is easy. I'm going to right-click on the View title bar and create a new view. This just gives us an empty space in which to work. I can drag a material over from the Material Map Browser and begin hooking things up. I can drag any other material over, say, from my Mental Ray materials, like uh, Arch Design material, or perhaps even one of the new Autodesk Library materials like we'll just grab anodized blue metal and that already has some maps hooked up to it. But you can see that you can have as many materials as you want within any given view. So I'll just go ahead and select this material to delete it and let's go ahead and just show you the basics of hooking materials up to the node. Creating a material is easy now that we have our node within our view. All I have to do is navigate within the Material Map Browser down to the type of map that I want to incorporate into my material, in this case a bitmap. I'm going to drag the bitmap map type on top of the Diffuse Color Input node and it turns green, and I immediately get the dialog box that allows me to pick the texture that I want to use. So I'm just going to choose Gray Plank and it automatically hook, creates all of the hookups that I need for this material. I'm going to go ahead and hide this. And now I can begin to add other maps into input nodes, or I can double click on the diffuse color map and I can get the material parameters for that. I've selected a map that I can also use as a bump map. Now, oftentimes you may have different maps, but the purpose of this is to show that you can use the same map in different slots by merely dragging out a wire and hooking it up to the input node there. So I've used the same map as a diffuse color map and as a bump map. So I had mentioned that the Slate Material Editor was configurable. Let's go ahead and close the Navigator and close the Material Parameters window and let's expand the Material Map Browser a little bit and let's take a look at some interesting things within the Material Map Browser itself. So I mentioned previously that all of your standard materials are available to you, Mentor Ray materials are available to you, and also the new Autodesk Material Library is completely available to you as well. The Autodesk Material Library is a significant addition to the material set within 3ds Max 2011 because it contains over 1,200 new materials in numerous categories that can be used within your scene. Things like ceramic, fabric, finishes, glass, liquid, masonry, all preset and ready to go directly within your scenes within 3ds Max 2011. Another really interesting feature about the Material Map Browser is its context-sensitive searching capabilities. I'm going to create a new view to create a new workspace. and I'm going to say OK there. I'm just going to come up to the text entry field at the top of the Material Map Browser. I'm going to type the letter M. And this is going to show me all of the materials and maps that are available to me within the standard materials, the Mentor Ray materials, the Autodesk Material Library, all different maps or submaps that I might want to use that are available to me. So this is really an excellent way to begin the material creation process because it allows you to quickly focus on the types of maps and materials that you're looking to use within your scene. 
So the last thing we're going to look at is the ability to organize commonly used materials into thing called groups. So from that drop down menu, I'm going to choose a new group and I'm going to call this my material, my materials. And so we'll add, uh, just start adding some materials that we use, for example, standard material, arch design material. We can even add maps like the bitmap and the color correction and the noise map. Once we have our materials that we frequently use in here, we can go a step further and we can color code the group so that it's easily identifiable. So there is my materials and it's color coded like that. If we, we can have as many groups as we want. So for example, if I have a group called design and then I can color code that group color. Or if I have another one say called automotive what this allows me to do is this allows me to group all of my materials that I use uh, for common tasks all into one location. So you can see the Slate Material Editor adds power and efficiency to task-based material workflows.